So this is a coelacanth, and this fish was often called a living fossil because it was first found alive in 1938 off the coast of South Africa, uh, where fossils of it were well known for hundreds of years, and people thought they died out with the extinction of the dinosaurs, you know, 66 million years ago. And then suddenly they found a living one off South Africa. And scientists were totally blown away by this because they thought a fish like this could teach us a lot about the evolution of fishes to land animals because they had these fleshy, thick lobe fins that are the, you know, the beginnings of arms and legs in, in later vertebrates. And this is a fossil coelacanth, which isn't too different from the living coelacanth, is that this is the front part of the skull where the eye is, and this is the back part of the skull. And we see here a gap between the front and the back part of the skull. So this is a joint that runs right through the brain case. So these things have a hinged skull. And this was always thought to be something that only prehistoric fish have because ancient fish that lived 400 million years ago in the Devonian have this kind of hinged skull. And these were the sorts of fish that gave rise to the very first land animals or tetrapods. Why do these things have a hinged brain case? We've solved that mystery in this paper today. And the reason is that as the coelacanth head grows from a very tiny pup, it has a cartilaginous rod called the notochord that props up the skull, it sort of sits underneath the skull. And in all vertebrates we have this notochord and usually the skull grows forward of the notochord so the notochord doesn't interfere with the growth of the head. But it does in the coelacanth. The coelacanth's unique. I've been working with a team from France led by Hugo Tutel, who's now actually at the University of Bristol in the UK. And I was privileged to be invited to contribute to this paper uh, for Nature by a French team of biologists and paleontologists. Uh, because of the work we're doing on fossil coelacanths that we could input into this paper about the brain of the living coelacanth.